Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. My name is Dale and in this video I'm going to give you an update on how my Starlink system is working here in the UK. Also a couple of little updates that might be of interest if you're thinking about getting Starlink in the UK and in Europe and also some future changes for my internet connectivity here at home. So let's jump into it. So I said in my original video that kind of the reason I went for Starlink is it's really a good solution if you need higher speed internet in a more rural location like where I am now since I moved. Uh, but in an ideal world, you know, fiber is still the best. And surprisingly for me, um, they've decided they're gonna install fiber uh, and bring it to my house uh, this year. So maybe by the middle of the year, I will have um, you know high speed fiber internet again back uh, into the house. And so I will actually then stop using Starlink now, not because I'm not happy with Starlink. Again, we're touching that in a minute. Uh, I am very happy with it. Just the fact that um, obviously Starlink is relatively expensive, uh, but I still think it's good value for money in a rural location if you need high speed internet. But obviously fiber is faster and cheaper. And not this, uh, Starlink is unreliable, just a little bit more um, reliable. So I will be moving to that, allow me to kind of download and mainly upload is the main thing that I'm looking for for uploading the videos faster. But um, yeah, so I will be moving away from Starlink at some point in the video, but or in, not in the video, obviously, that will be having that fast. This is open reach. Um, but um, yeah, later on in the year, we'll be moving back to a fiber connection. So in terms of how the system is working for me, I've been still busy, so I haven't uh, set up any ethernet connected internet devices in my home. So I'm still just working fully from wireless all the time. Now, not using the wireless access point that comes with Starlink, I've got this wired into my own network and then you know, connected that through my Ubiquiti uh, access points. But performance is still really, really solid. Again, back since I think it was November or December when I installed Starlink, I've only had one outage that last 10 minutes and that was about 3 p.m. on one day. So it was a little bit inconvenient because of the timing, but then back up, no problems. Weather does impact performance a little bit, but in general, uh, it's pretty rock solid. I see at least most of the time, 200 megabits per second down, and then the upload does tend to vary somewhere between 11 megabits per second up to around 30 megabits per second is what I see generally. If it's overcast and cloudy, a bit like it is today, there is a slight performance uh, impact. But again, most people don't need anything more than 100 most of the time. It's, it's the upload that's obviously, if you're a content creator, can be uh, a little bit more demanding, but I'm still really happy with it. Um, at the moment, as I'm doing this video, um, Starlink has got an offer on in the UK where instead of paying £460 for the Starlink hardware, you can get it for £300. That's not a, an ongoing reduction of the hardware cost. But again, if you're looking to get Starlink right now, no, no, now's a good time um, to sign because you're saving yourself £160. Keep in mind though, that that doesn't include um, any of the adapters or the mounting brackets that you might want. So again, you have to add those on separately. I still really recommend that you get the Ethernet adapter that I covered in the first video uh, and the second video probably when I was doing the mounting because if you want to connect it into an existing network system, then you know, you're going to need an Ethernet connection because the access point does not have uh, any Ethernet ports on the back. So yeah, I'm still really happy with the performance. And the reason why um, I wanted to do this video, as well as to say I'm still happy with it, and I think if you need uh, you know, high-speed internet in a rural location, this still makes sense. But now, in UK and in Europe, I'll put a little pop-up on the screen in a moment of all the countries this is possible in, um, that you can now rent Starlink instead of buying it. So based on my calculations, if you know that you're going to get fiber or perhaps the Starlink is a temporary solution because you've moved into a place and then you're going to be moving um, later. I think if you're going to have Starlink for less than two years, renting may be a more viable option than buying all the hardware um, outright like I have done. Obviously, if I could see into the future and I knew renting was coming, um, then yes, maybe I would look to renting, but that wasn't available uh, back in November when I placed my order. So. Instead of buying uh, the hardware at £460 um, and then paying £75 a month, what you can do is rent the hardware instead 
Uh, the same terms and conditions apply that you know if after if in between kind of getting it and 30 days you're not happy with the performance you can send it all back uh, get a refund on the hardware um but obviously you've got to make sure it's in good condition but um yeah if you rent it you don't buy the hardware you're obviously going to rent it 15 pounds a month and a one-off activation fee um of 99 pounds so again that makes it a little bit more affordable on month for that space it's not investing in the hardware that you know when i stop using starlink i don't think i have any use for it i probably will still leave it up there so i don't want to risk my life falling off the roof again um but yeah it might be a, a more uh, cost competitive option and I, I don't know this i'm just making this up maybe because you're renting if there is a fault with the hardware or anything on the ongoing basis because you don't own the hardware starlink does maybe they'll be able to replace it uh, as part of that as usual you can still cancel any time um once you have it and basically what happens is you'll just get cancelled at the end of your billing period so let's say you got um your, your billing was every 23rd of the month and you cancelled on the 18th you know your service will stop on the 23rd and then if you're renting you've got 30 days to send it back to them uh, in good condition they, they will give you a shipping label and stuff that you can print uh, and then send it back so i thought be worth letting you know that renting is an option so that's all i had again really happy with starlink again i want a bit faster upload speed that's really my only criticism where i find that i could do with a bit more bandwidth hence looking to move to fiber and um, save the cost but many people say 75 pounds a month is a lot of money for internet and i'm not gonna lie it is uh, but in a rural location there are sacrifices you have to make if you want faster internet you can go to you know just have a, a broadband solution which would be half the price um, but you know in my situation it was something like 20 meg down and 3 meg up it, it just wouldn't wasn't going to work for um, my needs so thanks very much for watching like this video if you have done or even if you liked other videos consider subscribing as well more content on the channel thanks very much for watching as always and until the next one take care and goodbye for now